Welcome to the Idaho Business Podcast, the only Idaho podcast focused on providing profits for Idaho people. If you love our state and love small business, you are in the right place. We interview local legends, learn business, and have way too much fun doing it. You're listening to the Idaho Business Podcast with your friend, host, and all-around great guy and owner of New Clean Commercial Cleaning, Spencer Ward. Remember that as you're going through this upcoming week and as you're going through and you're talking to your teams and you're communicating with your teams and you're trying to encourage them uh, to do a better job or to take a new assignment to do anything. Remember, you're going to fail sometimes, but don't doubt, doubt your decisions and let your team make their decisions as well. How many of us are um, guilty of you know, telling our teams what to do instead of saying, this is what needs to happen and this is the, the timeline that needs to happen in? I trust you guys. Now go make it happen. What really is at the center of your drive, your motivation, Spencer? I mean, here you are doing a podcast. You you own your cleaning business. You've done real estate. You've done other entrepreneur things. So what what's driving this? I like that. I like that question. And I, I like to call it what's what's my why? What what what's the why behind why I do all the things I do? And uh, really, for me, it's 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 my family. Like every time I feel like, you know, oh man, this is tough. I want to quit. <laughs> you know, I I I feel like I want I owe it to my children. I want to show them that they can, you know, show show them what their father can do and what he can accomplish. So it can also alter their their mindset and their their point of view. So as they go out in the world, they have that idea that, hey, we can accomplish anything we want us we want to do. We want to Anything we want, anything I, I can dream of, I can do it. And that's, I'm just really trying to raise strong, resilient children. Uh, and of course, I want to be successful. So I want to be successful and I want to have you know security for my family and I want to have fun with them. And I'll, that all takes uh, some level of success and money. <laughs> if you know how to motivate yourself, you're going to be able to get so much more done. And if you don't, you need to find uh, those small things that motivate you and I think that's one of the big things of being a virtual assistant is if you aren't motivated, then it's kind of hard to get stuff done because you're working from home. You are in a workplace with someone looking over your shoulder. So mindset is definitely, I think, my number one. And number two, having that schedule um, of when you want to get stuff done and just kind of planning out your day. Um, I can't remember what episode it was that you said planning out in like those 30 minute increments. And that's definitely helped me because I can figure out, okay, I need to get school done during this part of the day, work done during this part of the day, and then all the stuff that I want to do for myself later on. So having that schedule and that mindset, I think combined will help you be way more productive than you can imagine. When we think about customer service, you know, what, what comes to your mind? Um, you know, you, you think about dealing with problems. Uh, you, you think about, you know, trying to make your customers happy but if, but do you ever have you, you i'm sure each one of you in your businesses or or your teams have situations that come up on possibly a regular basis and it's the same scenario how many of you put a system in place to deal with that scenario uh, as it comes up because if it's something that happens on a monthly or weekly or you know semi-weekly basis there should be a system in place to, so you or your management team or, you know, mostly you don't have to be scrambling around and getting, getting time, you know, finding time to put out a fire or maybe it's not a fire, but, but how many of, how many of us is, have automated the system? Well, what's some of the best advice uh, for our audience that you would give them based upon your experience in business? Uh, surround yourself with good people. I think you're, team that you work with every single day needs to uh, have the same goals, same, oh, the same positivity thinking. I, I don't like negativity. I, I am a happy person. I like happy. Um, I don't like the dark cloud. 
people in my life. I just think if you surround yourself with good people and they have the same goals and they want your business to succeed and you give them those tools, that's first and foremost, the most important thing to me, I think. We're all like that when we're young, you know, we all have fools for masters when we, cause we think we know it all yeah. and we can do it all for ourselves. Uh, you know, funny enough, my speech teacher in like my junior year in high school, I, I don't know why I remember this, but uh, it, it was like a somber moment in the class. Cause he like, he had this real deep gruff voice. Like he was a basketball coach at our school. Like everyone, he had everyone's respect. But love the guy. And one day he gets up. He's like, listen, people, there's three levels in life. The level you're all on right now, and all you see is a rock, a sagebrush, and a beer can. And that's all you see. And he described the second level and the third level, you know, all progressively better levels. And towards the end of his, his, uh, his little spiel, he looks at all of us and he says, sadly, most of you will never see above this level. <laughs> Of the rock, the beer can, <laughs> and the safe for us. And it's and it's so true though. Like you need, you need to be able to lose yourself and say, you know, I need to be able to learn from others. And I I have, I can't just think that I know everything as I'm younger. And as I grow up, you you've got to be able to know that you can always be learning from others. So, to the business owners and the business leaders out there, mm-hmm. maybe you know from your your sage wisdom. What would be maybe your biggest advice to them as they're trying to grow their business and, and continue to, to be an asset to the community? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, um, a couple things that come to mind. Uh, one is one is your employees, you know, take care of your employees. If you can make sure that they stay long-term and um, stay kind of uh, true to the mission of the organization and, and that kind of thing. Again, if you're someone who's jumping around a lot, going chasing the dollar, you know, there's probably value uh, if you're an employee and, and feeling valued for for a dollar an hour or something like that. So that's probably one thing I would say. Um, second thing is kind of understand your community. What does the community need? So I find that I have a lot of respect for people who they're trying. They may not be doing it exactly right. They may not be hitting their message or the the audience that they need to in the way that they should. But I, I applaud them and I want to promote them and I want to uh, support those kinds of people because that's what it is that gets it done. The people who are consistent over a period of time, those are the guys who win. I like that. That's good stuff. And that's the thing with the people that are business owners or, or business leaders. You know, I ran into it when I was starting my business and there's, a, there's hard stuff to do and then there's fun stuff to do when you're first starting your company. Uh, or even an established company, you know, making your logo, making your website, putting your social media uh, presence out there. But then that's there. That's there. You put it all up. You get it going. You're like, okay. You think all these magical leads are just going to come up because you, you're you're on all these different platforms, and it's not like that. You got to have some know-how. You got to know how to approach and to talk to your clients and find a way to add value to their lives that they're actually going to want you in their lives a lot of business owners and even myself if i was to start a business you, you just have a lot on your mind of growing i gotta grow i've gotta mm-hmm. get bigger which to some degree is true right we need to sure. have, make more sure. revenue to better cover our expenses and at least more net income um more cash in our pockets but i would say that growth is not the only thing to focus on for our business owners and so as bankers a lot of times we are kind of counseling with our borrowers around that kind of principle. And it's not to say that bankers are sticks in the mud and we don't like growth and we don't like risk. We appreciate all those things, but knowing that growth does come at an expense, right? And it takes money to make money. And so to know what a proper and healthy amount of growth is, uh, and then when to kind of be able to maintain and then continue to make your business more efficient, uh, maybe more automated, like you were talking about, Spencer, you've done a lot of taking a lot of measures to automate your business so that you can keep your hands free to be more strategic about how you do your business. A lot of business owners need more of that time because they're so busy running everything, running the operation, 
and and so sometimes a, a rapid amount of growth can get them overwhelmed. Um, eight and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with stage three cancer, head and neck cancer. It was already mestatized into the lymph node chain. It was by all standards, it was serious. And the, you know, oncologists, the doctors were like, Hey, listen, you, you know, you got to get in right now, right now, right now to rate oops, brutal radiation, chemo, you know, very aggressive, um, treatment. And I, I took a pause. I said, wait, uh, hold on. You know, this was that moment for me, that moment where I said, this is the test. This is the test to see, am I going to just toe the party line? Like, you know, do what I'm told, never question. Don't even think twice, but like just hand my life and my body and my literally everything over to someone else to make these decisions for me. And I said, no, essentially I said, no, I'm going to do this differently. So the team I built around me is what saved me because for the longest time I wanted to wear every hat. I didn't want to let go of anything because I'm kind of a control freak and I just didn't want to let go of anything. And that's, ultimately what started causing problems was I just, I was spread too thin. I couldn't do everything. And so when I finally just let the ego go and started trusting other people to run it, I mean, we're, we're so much better off right now. And I, I entrust everything to them and it's, it's been so much better for me and letting me kind of enjoy my family and my kids and all that and be there for them. And so it, the delegation side of it is probably the biggest thing without going to individual stories. Um, sure. Finally learning to give up the ego and just say, no, let people help you um, because they're better at the job than I was. And yep. it's hard to hit that early on. Now I'm totally cool with it. I'm like, Hey, if you can do it better, do it because that saves me time and money ultimately and all that. So. Tax planning, I think, is helpful for just about anyone that is looking to reduce the amount of uncertainty that they have to face, face from a financial standpoint. If you really think about it, income taxes or taxes in general really do constitute most people's largest expense in their life. And there are so many people that leave that expense to chance or, or just to, to an unknown saying, gosh, it's, it's October and I still haven't filed and I don't know what I'm going to owe. To leave something that substantial or that unknown, I think really not only compromises, I think the mental well-being of most people, I think it's detrimental to self-employed ind individuals, particularly because of cash flow needs. You know, if I'm thinking about my clients that engage in tax planning, again, most of them do. It's my preference that they do. Um, you know, the purpose of us is saying, this is where you're coming out right now. We can have an honest conversation about the performance of your business, which at times really is a non-tax conversation, but we can talk about the business, what were your goals achieved, and then from there discuss what are other things that can or should be done that will have influence on your liability. Congratulations on spending a couple of minutes getting a little bit smarter, having some fun, and supporting the Idaho business community. If you're feeling the love, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you are.